it's a pleasure to be here. Really look forward to introducing you to uh, Gemini Therapeutics. Um, so uh, we are a product engine company, and what we're focused on at Gemini is really unlocking the potential of precision medicine in dry AMD. And that means that we think about the dry AMD patient population in a fundamentally different way, I think. Uh, instead of talking about uh, dry AMD as a broad, heterogeneous patient population, what we're focused on is really looking at high-risk, genetically defined patient populations that are hidden kind of within the broader definition, the umbrella definition of dry AMD. And we're doing a variety of things to really unlock that potential. We've got a very deep pipeline of technology and infrastructure to really uh, make this vision a reality. That includes uh, recombinant proteins, it includes monoclonal antibodies, it includes gene therapies, and every single one of our therapeutics is directly matched in a one-to-one -one manner. The mechanism of action of the therapeutic is designed to directly counteract the effects of a significant risk variant associated on the genetic level with certain patients with dry AMD. And we've brought together a fantastic group of uh, people on the management team, on the board, and on the SAB, a whole suite of technology from multiple universities around the world to really make this happen. Um, so, you know, within the dry AMD um, programs that we have at the company, we actually are going after three different distinct genetically defined subpopulations within uh, AMD. Um, one of those programs is our complement factor H program, which I'm gonna talk mostly about today. Um, and Factor H, as, as probably many of you know, has been really closely associated with AMD risk for over a decade. At Gemini, we're focused on very specific subpopulations which have very significant clinical risk and also very significant functional impact. So we're focused on patients where Factor H is, um, is actually dysfunctional. Uh, the protein is actually measurably deficient in these patients. Um, and that is associated with very significant clinical, high-risk clinical features. Um, an example is a case study here. This is a 52-year-old woman with a loss of function mutation in Factor H. Uh, she has both geographic atrophy secondary to AMD in one eye, wet AMD in the other eye, and you can see from the pedigree, a lot of the other members of her family are also affected. So, you know, our goal and our strategy at Gemini is really to identify patients with very high risk features kind of like this and identify these patients, uh, understand the clinical progression of these patients in a more complete way and understand the effect of our therapeutics directly on ocular biology that's linked to underlying genetics. So we see this as a real potential paradigm shift, you know, moving uh, the current thought, you know, where patients are not routinely genotyped in the clinical setting to a world where they are. And um, this is, changes the way that we talk about the disease internally at the company and with our partners. So we don't talk about um, dry AMD uh, in that way. We talk about, for example, patients with loss of function mutations in complement factor H who do have uh, dry AMD or geographic atrophy secondary to AMD. And we actually see this as not just a CFH problem only, you know, other patients have other mutations in other genes that are very, very important. So uh, we really are, um, I think, changing the definition of the way people think about these diseases. Um, so we're building on, you know, the shoulders of giants, I, I guess is one way to say it. A lot of our scientific founders have done really pivotal work defining these high-risk patients. Uh, we think there is additional work to be done here, uh, and that's why, you know, later this year we're initiating a very significant, uh, large, um, prospective longitudinal natural history study focused on really deconvoluting um, some of the genetic risk factors behind the disease, and we're focused specifically on certain uh, very, very high-risk subpopulations that are hidden within that umbrella of AMD. Um, so the study itself is um, is a very kind of in-depth, high-resolution look at these high-risk patients. We're going to be looking at a battery of both functional and structural measures. Um, and the idea here is to get a very, very high-resolution picture of their phenotype and also the genetics behind their disease. So we are doing targeted sequencing in all of these patients to really understand what drives the disease and the clinical progression of these patients. Um, and this is a very significant effort, actually. It's, it's the, uh, the biggest effort that's ever been done in genetically defined dry AMD. We are screening thousands of people, uh, and we are following hundreds of people 
um, over a period of multiple years, as you can see here. And we are looking at both uh, genetically defined uh, CFH-driven dry AMD and also other genetic uh, factors. Um, from a therapeutic perspective, we're doing a variety of things. One of the things that we're doing is we're going really to the heart of, of the problem in these patients. So we are going after complement, but complement's not really the right way to think about this. What we're doing is we are regulating complement. We're restoring complement. We're not inhibiting complement in the way that other complement therapeutics have done in the past. And specifically what we're doing here is patients have a lower level of functional factor H in their eye. We know that biologically, we know that genetically, and what we're doing is we're normalizing the level in their eye. And we think that is a much more straightforward therapeutic approach and less risky biological approach. We do have a full-length recombinant CFH candidate um, in preclinical development right now. It's an intravitreal candidate, and um, we've shown um, an ability to achieve super physiologic levels uh, in the eye. Uh, and our pipeline is illustrated here. It's a broad pipeline. In addition to the full-length recombinant program that I just mentioned, we have monoclonal antibodies, we have gene therapies, and two other programs in preclinical development, two other genetically defined subpopulations within dry AMD that we think are very high potential. And I look forward to telling you about them at a future meeting. Music